This is a short presentation about the Jagged Globe Everest expeditions. Jagged Globe's one of the leading operators of expeditions to Mount Everest. We've been going there since the early 90s and have taken as many trips as any of the, the leading Western operators. My own history in the mountain started in 1999, but this is the first time I reached the summit in 2003. I have now led a total of 13 Everest expeditions and been to the top 10 times. But for this presentation, I'm going to use pictures from the 2019 trip. There are a total of six climbers going for Everest. This is the group in Kathmandu before starting, and it includes some people who were trekking to base camp with us, as well as two people that were climbing Lhotse. Now, clearly, every year the trip will be different. Uh, and what I aim to do is just give a bit of a feel for the principles behind the way we run our trips uh, and show how, how this is perhaps different from some of the other operators. Firstly, we have a longer walk into base camp than most people. Uh, we spend a couple of, uh, a decent bit of time for the group to get to know each other and climb three peaks for passes over five and a half thousand meters before getting to base camp. Then when we get to base camp, clearly the most important part of any Everest expedition is the Sherpa team. And this is uh, the group we had with us in 2019. Uh, it's difficult these days with the complexities of, of all the groups on Everest to have exactly the same group of Sherpas every year. But Pem Churi, who's uh, our Sirdar and uh, the guy that organises all the Sherpas with us, has been with us a long time and I've made most of my Everest climbs with him. He's a, a mountain guide and trainer in Nepal, runs a training programme and uh, selects from that the, the best young Sherpas coming through to work with our expedition, in addition to the, the core of more experienced people. A comfortable base camp is important. Our, our Sherpa crew go there a few weeks before the climbers and make sure we get a good spot with plenty of space for all the, the sleeping tents and the support tents. Similarly, uh, a comfortable, warm dining environment and good food is an essential part of, of every Everest expedition. And I think all, all our climbers appreciate that. We also endeavour to spend a reasonable amount of time uh, practising skills in the icefall close to base camp before rushing onto the mountain. This is perhaps one of the reasons why our trip typically a week or a few days longer than some others. Rather than just get to base camp and go straight into the climbing, we do spend uh, a bit of time just making sure that everybody is as efficient as possible with their equipment. And then we're moving through the icefall. I'm not going to talk too much about the specifics of the mountain. Uh, there's a huge amount of information out there about Everest and I'm sure anybody interested in climbing it will have access to these different sources. I'm just trying to kind of concentrate on, on our approach and, and what we do to make the climb more enjoyable and successful. We move a lot in the early hours of darkness to avoid the heat uh, and make the journeys between each camp as comfortable as possible. From the base camp at 5,300 metres, we're now up at camp one at 6,100. And we'll typically make three or four journeys through the icefall to, to camp one. Then the terrain's a bit easier, moving on to camp two at six and a half thousand metres. And again, we try as much as possible to travel together as a group. A lot of other operations, uh, the team are very fragmented and you'll meet individual climbers and individual Sherpas. Uh, we find it better getting our, our team to spend as much time working together as possible with myself and Pem, while the, the rest of the Sherpas move the equipment and prepare the route on the mountain. <clears throat> Here we have approaching Camp 3, 7,300 metres on the Lhotse face. And again, a good Sherpa crew with good knowledge of the mountain can find and level out a safe, comfortable spot at Camp 3. We're using pretty large tents, three-person tents between two to make sure there's enough space for everyone. 
And here we have moving uh, between camp three and camp four, approaching the yellow band on the Lotse face. Camp four, uh, fortunately, it's a large open area. There's space for a lot of tents as at the peak of the climbing season, there will be many teams there. We have the option to alter our strategy at this point. On my earlier climbs, it was normal that we would reach camp four and then go for the summit the next day. With the increasing number of people on the mountain and the fact that it can now be a bit slower getting from camp three to camp four, we've introduced the option of spending an additional night at camp four. So we take up enough oxygen and food so that uh, if necessary, we can, we can spend an extra night before going for the summit. And then an early start, it varies. Uh, it used to be midnight, now it's closer to 10 p.m. And the, the view of dawn we get will, will be quite high in the mountain, usually above the balcony. And here we can see the, the, the shadow of Everest. <coughs> On my earlier climbs, it was possible to keep the entire group together on summit day. Now with a lot of other people moving in the mountain, if for any reason anybody stops to do anything, have a drink, uh, change an oxygen bottle, we tend to get mixed up with other teams. So although in this particular year, out of the six climbers, five got to the summit, that was in several small subgroups. So I've got pictures here of uh, most of the climbers on the summit, but not, not all together at the same time. Roland with uh, one of the Sherpas and a good view of uh, Makalu in the background. And for myself, this was my my 10th summit climb out of out of 13 expeditions. Now, if I was talking about Everest a decade ago, the, the main decisions the leader would have to make would be to do with uh, weather and logistics. But it, it is certainly a fact now that the, the most complicating factor with climbs on Everest are the numbers of other people. And so the, the skill of the leader and the Sherpa support crew is, is trying to work around that new reality and find the, the, the safest way of getting, of getting the group safely up and down the mountain. Here we've got a uh, our team just coming down the, the, the Hillary step. And I think clearly it would be preferable to be on the mountain with fewer people, but the new reality is there will be a lot of climbers there and the, the skill of the well-run expeditions, the experienced leaders is managing that in a way that gives the climbers a safe and enjoyable climb. We have uh, ourselves here just coming back into the South Col. And the successful summit team at the South Call the following day, ready to head down. And in order to achieve that, uh, <clears throat> here we've got the, <clears throat> the party the following day back in base camp. And I think we were uh, the, almost the only team on the mountain that all set off from base camp together and all walked into base camp together at the end. And that does require a, a considerable amount of resources. I will just mention oxygen at the end. For our team of six climbers plus the Sherpa support crew, we had slightly over 100 bottles of oxygen and uh, many, many bottles are, are abandoned on the mountain, but we uh, try and keep things as tight as possible. And I think only, only one or two uh, went astray by the time we, we got everything back. So that includes our oxygen supplies and calculations do include enough for, for that extra night on the South Call. And just to wrap up with a, a, a view of the mountain, certainly climbing Everest has changed uh, over the years I've been there, but uh, I think we have a, a good formula and a good crew to manage the, the climbs as safely and as enjoyably as possible. And uh, we have a, an excellent, not only success rate and, and safety record, but uh, I think satisfaction rate among the, 
the climbers who've joined us. So that's a very brief rundown on how the Jagged Globe Everest expedition went in 2019 and the, the principles that we bring to bear in running them into the future. Thank you.